India's Chandrayaan-3 is set to embark on its journey to the moon on the 14th of July. Now, it will be the first spacecraft to land on the south pole of the moon. The much-anticipated launch of Chandrayaan-3 mission by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is scheduled for 2.35 p.m. IST. The spacecraft will lift off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota on India's mighty rocket launch vehicle Mark III or the LVM-3. Now, the lunar mission is a follow-up to the Chandrayaan-2 mission, which was launched in September of 2019. Now, to discuss this further on what to expect and what's next, we are being joined by Mr. Tapan Mishra, who is a former director at ISRO and founder and chief scientist at CISIR Radar Private Limited. Welcome to the interview, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me for the program. Right. Uh, Mr. Mishra, Chandrayaan-3, please take us through what to expect and how long will the mission last? Yes, it is a follow-up of Chandrayaan-2. But Chandrayaan-2, we unfortunately, we, we could not land it. It probably crash-landed the lander. And we lost the rover also, we lost the lander and rover both together. So this time we have we have made a correction, a few corrections, and they we are confident that this time it will be able to land. And we will be the probably the first one to target to the uh, uh, southern hemisphere. In fact, that's just prior to us. Chandrayaan 2 and the following Chandrayaan 2, there is one Israeli lander that also targeted the southern side. Right. And they, it also crash landed. And the very recently, one Japanese lander also crash landed there. So, if we are able to land there, so it would be the first time to make history. The important of the southern side is that the 69 degree latitude is that the sunlight is low and temperature is low and the correspondingly there's, there should be a more abundance of uh, water on the surface or the abundance is not in comparison to what is on earth but it is in comparison to what is on the sun or the moon and they obviously that the Chandrayaan one first time is to locate there is, there is a presence of water in deep craters and also on the surface, but they may they get generated and but they get evaporated immediately. But in southern side, because of the lower temperature, it may be there. Water may be there, and our mass spectrometers can detect this in a, and a, a practical experimentation can find out. Because the Chandrayaan one only inferred from the hyperspectral data and the radar data. So the South so, Pole, I'm I'm just butting in here the South Pole or the lunar South Pole that you were explaining. How are the conditions different here from the other places where the US moon missions have mostly taken place? Because no spacecraft has ever landed here. What makes it so difficult for landing on this side of the moon? You said there's lesser sunlight, more water. What else is Yeah. It, it is just like on the earth, you know, if you go to the 70 degree latitude, you reach the polar region. Right. The light becomes stable and the temperature becomes low. So everybody in earlier missions, including the Apollo missions, they all landed near the equator of the moon so that, you know, they, they get the maximum sunlight and they get the maximum energy. And the temperature is manageable. Right. But uh, this time, so people have not tried, but earlier to go to the southern side or even the, the deep northern side, where it would have been the temp sunlight intensity would have been very low and which would have been very precarious for the mission. But uh, the recent interest is that the presence of water and the, uh, everybody wants to validate the presence of water with a direct experimentation rather than inferring from the spectral signatures of radar and the or the hyperspectral system so i'll, and I'll that is why the i'll request you to just uh, reduce it to an english which you know a regular viewer can also i understand this is technical language that you're bringing it down but just to make it a little more understandable for the regular viewer uh, if you could just explain to us you know why india has chosen this side of the moon to target or rather i would say to land on yes 
still in chandrajal 1 we have located the presence of water on moon right, right. polar region and the and in fact in all across the moon they exist for a very small duration they get formed on the bombardment of the alpha particle from the solar rays and they uh, solar wind and then they form water but they in this, you know, this all this have been inferred indirectly. So nobody has actually went and measured water there. Right. So they have inferred from that a spectral signature from the hyperspectral equipment of NQ and also from the radar signature, a synthetic aperture radar signature. Now this inference was the indirect inference, but they, one has to validate that. They, by measuring practically the water is there. If you can locate water uh, practically, that uh, this is a... So that purpose, there is a sudden rush after Chandrajal 1 to go to the southern hemisphere. Right. And uh, we are also going to get a practical validation that, uh, yes, it is water is there. See, I am seeing water from a distance. Right. And I say it is water. But if I go near that, it might be water, it might, might be the mirrors. So India so, is essentially going right till the lunar south pole to validate what the findings south have been from a distance. Validate exactly. that the water is there. Sir, also talk and to us. Also the right. Sir, mm -hmm. also talk to us about what are the changes that have been made this time as uh, compared to the previous attempt with Chandrayaan 2 in 2019. Yes. In Chandrayaan 3, what I see that a two major differences are there. One is that uh, uh, Chandrajan 3, they, it was originally designed, Chandrajan 2 lander with a four engines. See, that uh, is uh, normally to land on moon with a nominal lander, you need a thruster of the order of three to four kilo newton. But uh, we don't have that technology. So we have a one newton class one kilonewton class thrusters so we decided to instead of a one thruster centralized thrusters high high power thrusters everybody uses we used four lower power thrusters at the four corners of the land right but then you know at the last moment there was a lot of brainstorming and all and the people said that even the four would not be enough so we put another fifth one at the center. It was done at the last moment. Right. And they, when it could not reach, there may be two reasons. You know, there's a thrusters misbehaved, that is, or the fuel would have got adjusted, or the instrumentation might have gone wrong. Right. ISRO probably analyzed the result. So they made, instead of a pipe, they put the original design of a four thrusters. Right. And the second day, they, they are carrying 300 kg extra fuel rather in comparison to Chandrajan 2. Right. So that the, when it tries to look for optimum landing site by hovering on the earth, on the moon by almost 60 meters, it should not lose its fuel. Right. It should have a sufficient fuel with which it is planned. So these two important modifications they have made. So there is extra fuel this time and there is also a more yeah. reinforced thruster which has been incorporated in Chandrayaan 3 to make sure that the shortfall which was left in Chandrayaan 2 was made up for. Now sir, also what will this mission mean for India and how do you see it in context with NASA's Artemis mission? There is a, these are the two different things. Uh, as far as India is concerned, it is, you know, they say all said and done, you know, the space has been enchanting us both spiritually and the scientifically. You know, all our gods and goddesses are also born in space. There are also the space elements are there. But uh, as far as the science is concerned, the reaching on the moon is a quite a significant success at the demonstration of the uh, India's caliber in executing such a complex mission. So what will uh, demonstrate 
this India's this capability, and also we say that the last time we failed, but we learned from it, and we have corrected ourselves and made a better mission. Right. And and you know that any of these countries which has a space capability, they have also have a raised esteem in the global order, and this will have an indirect fallout. In diplomatically, militarily, and economically, and most important thing, it is it is going to, you know, romanticize and energize Indian youth to contribute in science, and also it may be possible to it will. Arrest the brain drain, and our bright brains will stay back in India and work for India. Right. Because if they are not working for India, then India is not going to progress. India is not going to get a newer technology. So this is true. As far as the Artemis Agreement is there, it is an international agreement. There is a more and more signatories are coming. Where they say because the space missions are complex and costly, in Artemis Agreement. With the India has time, so India can source or India can contribute to both ESA, NASA, and other signatories uh, like a JAXA, a new space mission, newer space technology, or that data from the space resources. Now you know the space this data is very restricted. Now we'll be able to get data from the American missions. Uh, Americans will be able to get data from Indian missions, or we can contribute a certain payload which will go to an ESA mission, or ESA can provide a software which will come to our processing. So it, it makes the cooperation between the space tech scientists less restrictive, and it means a higher turnover and a higher quality of space products. You know, if individually we want. We can do as limited things, but together we work. We probably achieve much more synergistic. So our team is agreement is towards that direction. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much for your time, sir. That was Mr. Tapan Mishra, who is a former director at ISRO and is a chief scientist at CISR Private Limited. So thank you so much for your inputs joining in. Thank you.